Well, hello again, everyone. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, now that we've covered sort of the basics of, you know, algebra questions in uh, between equations and number properties, we're sort of ready to, to acquire or at least review some of the basic skills of geometry questions, which is really a basic understanding of lines and angles. Uh, and again, there will be questions, there's some questions that will deal more or less exclusively with these lines and angles. But there will be other questions in which our, our job is more to apply these concepts to other types of questions. So again, we're going to be learning a lot of concepts here that may be important in and of themselves, but will also be important in their application down the line. Uh, and again, remember, just like the algebra questions we've talked about before, geometry questions require very little difficult computation or really advanced knowledge. What's really being tested is your ability to apply your basic knowledge. So let's cover some of the basics of these uh, geometry questions or of these lines and angles. So as you can see, I've got two things drawn on the screen here. The first is a pictorial representation of parallel lines, and the second is a parallel representation excuse me, a pictorial representation of perpendicular lines. Now, it's very important to understand, uh, though this is probably a review for most of you, it is very, very important to understand what these two things mean. Now, uh, parallel lines, if you think about them on a coordinate plane, perhaps, are lines that will never touch, lines that share the same slope, right? Uh, which, which has implications regarding what will happen with, uh, regarding any angles created through, from lines drawn through it. So, Parallel lines are dictated by this symbol right here that I just underlined. That is very important to remember. Now, perpendicular lines, likewise, are uh, notated by this symbol, right? Uh, and what perpendicular lines are, sort of exactly the opposite, kind of, of what parallel lines are. There are lines that touch in such a way that they create uh, right angles, right? Okay, so that's a right angle as well as that is a right angle. And again, of course, a right angle is an angle of a 90-degree measure. Okay, so now that we've covered uh, parallelism and uh, perpendicularism, I suppose, uh, we're ready to move on to some of the implications of parallel lines. That's what we'll do first. So, as you can see here, I've drawn for us uh, another pictorial representation, this one of uh, probably so, uh, a, something like a diagram we might see on an SAT question. Now, as you can see, lines 1 and 2 are parallel, as we have uh, written up here. Uh, and line 3 goes through it at a, you know, some sort of an angle. So, from this diagram, we're going to cover a number of the basic properties of angles. Now, uh, the first one, um, and I suppose not necessarily the most important one, but uh, an important one, right, uh, is that any time you have uh, what are called vertical angles, that is, angles that are directly opposite from one another um, via two lines crossing each other, such as B and D here, or A and C, right, okay, are going to always equal each other. So we can determine then from this, this picture, this diagram, right, that A is going to equal C, B is going to equal D, and likewise on the bottom side, um, W is going to equal Y, and X is going to equal Z. So, armed with this information, we can already, uh, you know, do a lot with a, a diagram of this sort, given any sort of uh, actual angle measure, right, uh, to figure out what we need to know. But the good news is we can find out even more with two parallels. Right? So whenever a line is drawn through two parallel lines, we can assume that corresponding acute angles and corresponding obtuse angles are also equal, which in this case means that A would be equal to W, B would be equal to X, and so on and so forth. Right? So we know then, by the property of substitution, that is A, if A is equal to W, right, and A was also equal to C, and W is also equal to Y, A, W, C, and Y are all going to be the same thing. So all of these acute angles created, right, that is any angle, an acute angle being any angle less than 90 degrees, are all going to be the same. And it's going to be the same thing for all your obtuse angles, right? So B, which we already know equals D, is also going to equal X and Z, okay? Okay, and this is what is, these are what are called corresponding angles. You can always measure corresponding angles from two parallel lines with a third line drawn through them. Now, there is one more important bit of knowledge that we can deduce from a diagram of this sort. Uh, and that is uh, from something that is called the, some, from something called supplementary angles. Now, a supplementary angle is really just any, uh, or supplementary angles, excuse me, are really just any two angles that together add up to equal 180 degrees. So now that, since we know that on in either side of a line, right, we have to have 180 degrees, right, so this total angle here, say, would have to be 180 degrees, Right? We know then that any two uh, angles that correspond in this way, any two supplementary angles, are going to have to add up to 180 degrees. So in that case, we know that A plus, excuse my handwriting there, um, we know that A plus B has to equal 180, right? Um, if my pen would work, there we go. A plus B has to equal 180. Conversely, A plus D would also have to equal 180, right? 
we can deduce any number of things. So any two angles that fall on the same side of a line, whether or not they're divided by a third line, right, are always going to have to add up to equal 180 degrees. So say down here, uh, x and y would have to add up to equal 180. Y and z would have to add up to equal 180, right? Okay, so that is what is called a supplementary angle. Now, uh, another little thing to know, um, won't come up nearly as often on the SAT as supplementary angles, but is what we call a complementary angle. Now, the complementary angle is really quite simple. All it says really is, so say these are, you know, we'll call them uh, angle M, perhaps, and angle N. Um, so as you can see, we have a right angle here, so total of 90 degrees. So if supplementary angles add up to equal 180 degrees, uh, complementary angles will add up to equal 90 degrees. Uh, just an important, important definition to remember, not nearly as important as supplementary angles, but potentially important. So yet another thing to remember. All right, so let's go ahead and apply what we've learned, uh, which is most of the, the basics of lines and angles, uh, to a few actual questions. So here we are. And as you can see, we've got a nice uh, question written at the bottom of the screen, a nice dra diagram drawn at the top. Um, the question is, if line 1 is parallel to line 2, what is the value of a plus b? Now, again, we really only have to apply some of the same basic concepts that we covered before. Now, uh, we can very quickly figure out that a and b have a very specific relationship, and that is actually that they're equal. Because if you remember that these corresponding uh, obtuse angles here, right, uh, are the same. So this is A, right, because this is A up here. This also has to be A. Sorry for that very ugly A there, but that is an A, right? And so now we know that A and B are actually vertical angles as well. So we can go ahead and say that A equals B, right? So whenever we do A plus B to find our final answer, right, we're actually going to be adding the same number. Now, very quickly, we know that 70 and A and 70 and B are uh, supplementary angles, right? So we know that 7, let's go ahead and do it, work with B, right? So 70 plus B has to equal 180, right? Simple enough. So very quickly, right? Remember what we learned in equations. Subtract 70 from both sides, and we're going to end up with B equals 110. Now, we know that A and B are equal, right? So to find the answer of A plus B, right, it's just going to be 110 plus 110, and very quickly we've arrived at our answer of 220 degrees, right? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a, you know, slightly more complex problem, but one that uh, requires the same basic concepts. So, uh, again, with apologies, as always, for my less than stellar artistry, uh, the question reads, if line 1 is perpendicular to line 2, uh, very similar to just before, uh, what is the value of y? So since we know that uh, these two lines here are indeed parallel, right? Uh, we know that the same rules as before apply. So we know that if our corresponding acute angles, such as this and this, right, uh, are going to create, uh, again, the same value. So we know that then this is going to be x, this is going to be y, right? So now that we've got these over here, uh, using vertical angles, we're going to have a much easier time figuring out this answer, right? So we can, again, going back to what we've learned in our equations video, we can actually create a system of equations, right? So we know that since x and y uh, lie on either side of the same line, right, uh, that they are going to be, again, what is called supplementary angles, right? So we can create our first equation, which is going to be x <coughs> plus y equals 180, right? As well as our second equation, which is going to be that 3x equals y, right? And how do we know that again? We know it because they are vertical angles, right? So using this information, we can go and plug in to uh, our previous equations. We've already got this one, uh, you know, solved, right? Right here, very easily for substitution. So if we know that y equals 3x, we can just go plug in a 3x in our other equation. So let's just say then that x plus 3x equals 180, right? Okay, so then we know that 4x is going to equal 180 as well, right? Okay, so uh, when we divide by 4 on both sides, divide by 4, right? We know that our x is going to ultimately equal 45. Now, we've got our value for our x, just as we did in our, uh, you know, equations video, we're just going to go back and plug in that 45 for our x in our previous equation, right? So we know then that, uh, let's see, where's a good place to get some work done over here? We'll look over here. Okay, so if 3x equals y, we know then that 3 times 45 is also going to equal y. So very quickly, we've gotten to our answer, which is going to be y equals um, 135. So again, same basic concepts as before. This one just required us to create a system of equations, right? Uh, just as we did in our previous video. So again, no math in this in this problem is very difficult. It's just a matter of understanding what it is you're being asked and applying your basic skills.
All right, so let's just go ahead and take a look at one more thing before we're ready to move on to polygons. Okay, so finally here we're going to take a look at uh, questions that involve a bunch of lines that sort of all meet at a central point, right? Which you might even call circular lines. Now, there's really only one very important thing that you have to remember in situations like this, and that is that any lines that form a circle like this, or any set of angles, right, around which you could make a circle and every... Um, that's obviously not a circle, but right, but all the uh, every every angle within would be accounted for. We know that every angle within there has to add up to be 360, right? Much like we know that A, B, and C, or uh, D, E, and F would have to equal 180, or for that matter, E, B, and C, F, A, or B, right? Any set of three that are all on one side of a single line would have to equal 180. All of these taken together, all of these angles have to add up to equal 360. So in this case, it would be then. A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F, right, are all going to equal 360. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at a practice problem that takes this into account. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got another diagram and another question. Uh, and that question is, in the figure, what is the value of M, right? Uh, now, this would be very easy, obviously, if uh, we didn't have the problem of there also being ends in the picture, right? But, fortunately, we have two vertical angles that are set in terms of, uh, you know, one in terms of n and one in terms of n. So we know, then, that 2m is going to equal n, because 2m and n are vertical angles, there and there, of course, right? So, uh, we can know very quickly that for every n we have two m's, right, which allows us to rewrite everything in n in terms of m, right? So this n right here, we can rewrite as a 2m. This 2n right here, we can rewrite as a 4m, because remember, for every n, there are two m's. Now, we can use our laws of vertical angles, right, to fill in the rest, right? So the, up here, we would have then 4m as well, right, because this and this are vertical angles, and then over here, we would also have 4m, right? So, very quickly, we can solve this problem. Not, not too difficult, right? So we have, uh, as you can see, we have 4m plus 4m plus 2m plus 4m plus 4m plus 2m. So, uh, right, let's take right, right here. So 4m plus 4m plus 4m plus 4m, right? We had four, four m's plus 2m plus 2m, right? The two, two m's. Ultimately, all that's going to equal. 360, right? So when we add together all those m's, we get 20m equals 360, right? So divide both sides by 20, divide both sides by 20, and with a little help from our calculator or our brains, if you're good enough at mental math, we know then that m is going to ultimately equal 18 because it takes 18. 20 goes into, into 360 18 times, right? So uh, each m there has a value of 18, right? So again, thanks for watching. Uh, now that we've covered sort of the basics of, uh, you know, geometric understanding, we're uh, prepared to move into some slightly more difficult uh, geometry questions. So, you know, in the next video, we'll cover uh, polygons. Uh, and hope to see you then.